This is Simeon from praiserex.com, home of the joyful sound, and welcome back. We're going to go into the world of Colossus, Albion Colossus. And this is the latest release from Spitfire Audio. A lot of things going on about this particular uh, release. You know, and it might not get as loud as you think, but it's gonna be interesting, Jeff. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to say the least. So when I saw the trailer, it was like part uh, Money Heist, part Stranger Things, and that scene right there was like uh, the, the Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt movie. They, they just threw a whole bunch of different uh, tropes in there. But this is recorded in a brand new hall. This is recorded in, uh, in Glasgow, in Glasgow's Royal Concert Hall. And so you've got two different sizes. I think that's the thing. They're, they're, it's like a chamber size, small room, and then a big room that we can uh, that we can take a look at. Now, another big thing about this is it's the first Albion that is in the Spitfire player. So you'll notice that it's in their Spitfire player, and we're going to just get right into this. So let's pull up Albion Colossus. The first thing that we're going to notice is, of course, the Spitfire player. Let's just go down to the initial anthology patch. This is the city. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it's not air. It's not air studio. So it's got a totally different, uh, totally different sound signature to it. Um, And this always gets me is the range. I want to, but but there's a, but I'm working on a workaround with in, inside of Unify. Now I'm going to unlink. So we've got. Let's just let's just kind of do a quick overview of what we've have. We've got the the standard uh, expression and dynamic, but we look over here. We have two brand new sliders and scale and depth. And this is what um, this is what actually brings this difference together. And this is to to, to me. This is. It's like an experiment. Of course, this is the first Albion that uh, Spitfire has released in their own player, the first Albion. It, to me, it's not, the, the orchestra sounds are not that in your face. Like they're, they're very rich sounding to me. Very suspenseful. Okay, I'm going to unlink. I'm going to unlink. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, so what happens is some of these controls, you can link the expression and dynamics to the uh, scale and depth, but I'm going to unlink them for now so we can just hear the differences. So with the with these horns, Just, dy just basic dynamics. And this is in the smaller, uh, the smaller, uh, smaller space, the smaller recording space. Very rich to me. Okay, so now, okay, see I'm out of range here. So let's go to C so we can get that low. This is a smaller ensemble. So let's see, let's hit, hit this D flat here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna adjust the scale 
and listen to this. So here is the smaller ensemble, and here is the bigger, is the symphonic. Chamber size, symphonic size. And there's very little, um, very little reverb. Yeah, we've got a little bit. I'm gonna turn this off so we can just hear the sound. There we go. Yeah, thank you, Justin. See, what would I do with, without you being on the live stream? <laughs> See, we can, there's so many faders and it's like. Now this is the larger. That's what I'm looking for. Now that's just dry. So let me hit it. And this is, with, this is without reverb. And this is the full symphonic, and this is the, the depth slider is all the way down. So this is the closest, uh, I guess, mic position. So here we go. We're going to hit it. Now let's take the depth slider all the way back. So this, there, there are no individual mic positions. It's all controlled by the depth slider. That means all of the articulations and all of the instruments are loaded in here. That's why when you look up at the uh, memory, uh, let's see, we can see this. Um, we can see this is at, um, right now it's at 2.3 gigabytes. And so we're loading all of those articulations, all of the different mic positions in and, um, that's uh, that's why this everything is kind of sitting in there waiting to be brought in and out through the uh, different controls. So this is the full dynamic and let's go. This is the close. Now this is the farthest out. I've played around with this a, a little bit, but I'm I'm discovering something different about this. And I think it has to do with that dynamic layer. Okay, crescendo. Got the um, hairpin or the staccato. Let's just oh that okay. case. So this is the low string staccato. 
Now see the depth, and this is on the full symphonic, um, and the reverb is off, so let's play with the depth a little bit. It's kind of a macro type of effect because all of the positions are like. And dynamics are controlled with the shorts. They're controlled by velocity. Here are the, um, the high string hairpins. Hairpins are beautiful. Okay. So when you release them, it'll it'll cut off. So you gotta hold them, hold them out. And I'm gonna I am gonna throw a little bit of reverb on here. I like those hairpins because you're you're getting that real realistic um, Tycho's. So this here is just sort of like a a preset that has a little bit of everything that you can kind of just 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 get a start with. And then if you hover over the uh, over the key, if you look down in the bottom left, uh, it will tell you what uh, it should tell you what what it is. Okay. So and the, on the drum kits, it will tell you. Um, yes, you've got to do the um, you've got to get the pro version to actually be able to float those out. Yeah. Very cool. And some drums. Yeah, okay, I've got the reverb here. Let's take the reverb. Out. Yeah, just some kits and longs. Let's go on to the individual sounds here. Um, let's just go to the low strings and let this load here. And one of the things is the is the, the loading thing because we're loading so many different uh, articulations all at the same time that that you're going to see this um, you're going to see that uh, that that light the CPU light here the CPU light's going to be flashing quite a bit so here we go here's the here are the low the longs and I'm going to take the scale and depth down. So the center knob, the center knob will take you to the um, to these controls here, and you can you can assign you can assign the, uh, the function of the knob by clicking on the on the controls here. So it defaults to hype, and 
it defaults to height. And then I'm just gonna go, just tweak the reverb down and then let's take it back, let's take it back to hype and we can take a listen to what that sounds like. Okay, let's see, low strings. And same here with the dynamics. Volume drops quite a bit when I have it down at the lower dynamics. Then we can push it up. Now let's uh, go ahead and change the scale. And let's hype it up a little bit. So I've got the knob set to hype and let's... Oh yeah. extra oomph there with that. That's really nice. Now let's go back to the chamber size and listen, listen how, how the, uh, how the sound kind of collapses a little bit. Listen to that. Now here we go. I'm going to go from the full symphonic down to the uh, chamber. Here we go. Three, two, one.
see what it just it sucks you in. It, it just sucks you into this. Let's see what else we've got with the knob here. Let's just throw some reverb in here. that I um, the thing that I was missing uh, uh, is just you, you okay so it's the dynamic that dynamic slider uh, I'm gonna back the height down a little bit but what I was missing I was not going all the way up before with this and so I was missing out on a whole different layer so it, it only seems like it happens when you go into the last 20% or so and it just kicks in and it's powerful. It's just beautiful. Okay, now let's go to the legato. And this is low strings. And let's go, let's start close. Let's just start close with this. Now let's go take it to the symphonic section. Okay, and I hear the cellos kick in there. We might have to do a part two uh, live stream with this. Um, let's do the hairpins on the longs, on the lows. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it's crossfading between all of the, uh, all of those, yeah, that's what's so crazy. It's crossfading between so many different things. So I can hit one note and there are eight voices and different, all these voices are stacked. Now let's back it down to the chamber size and just go all close now. You get a really different And we've got the different hairpins. Let's go to the high strings. 
And we've got additional, additional longs for all of these. Um, we've got flautando. Little flautando. And we've got a real dynamic flautando. It's not just the soft. <laughs> Wouldn't be a, yeah, absolutely. Wouldn't be a Spitfire library without uh, Soltasto. Let's go back to the chamber size. The chamber size is nice. That's nice, and Solpont. Yeah, listen to that now. Chamber. Going into the full symphonic. Really gritty. Really gritty. Tremolo. Yeah, playing with that scale um, slider is really cool. Uh, let's check out um, some of the high strings. Yeah, by default, hype is enabled. That's, uh, yeah, the presets, they've got that enabled for the control of the middle knob, but then when you click on the center, it, it allows you to adjust the other uh, timing, release, filter, compress, and reverb. So this is the long Let's go to the legato. Got three round robins here on legato. That's cool. Yeah, so you've got round robins on legato, and that's one of the things that I've not uh, I've not seen too much of. I think that's a new a new technique that we're seeing. This is the spiccatos. Oh yeah. I think we've got uh, reverb. Let's just back the reverb off so we can hear the um, 
and go to the chamber size. And you can hear the natural decay of the room. Cool, and let's go to the full symphonic. And you hear a little bit more of that decay. Beautiful. And then the depth, let's just go ahead and throw the depth way out there and go to the staccato. It kind of gets a little bit washier there. Let's see. Let's go like halfway. Okay, I might be able to do that one. Okay, so now you notice this is just the high strings. This is just high strings. And I run out of room and you know me, I've got to have two hands on the keyboard. So watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna pull up my dear friend, Unify. So this is what I've done. This is another reason why I love Unify so much is because uh, it takes your plugins to another level. Okay, so I've got three instances of Colossus loaded into Unify. Uh, the first instance that I have, I've got low strings, and then the second one, I've got high strings, and then I've got high strings, longs, and then I've got, uh, let's see what I've got. I've got the low uh, spiccato here. So let's see. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and, and change the, um, because let's do, let's do a little bit of the spring. And uh, let's go to the, okay, I've got the low string shorts already. Let's go and put the um, high strings, get the high strings. Um, let's get the high string shorts so I can um, do a little bit of that. Okay, click it and wait. Okay, shorts, high strings. Let's go to the high string shorts. And then uh, let's go to Mercado. Okay, it's, and that it's taking, it's taking some time to load here. Okay, let's just, yes, yeah, so I have a, I have, I have three instances loaded into Unify, so each instrument layer. And then you'll notice that I've got the key zones cross-fading in between each other, so, uh, so they overlap. Um, okay. Yeah, so... Let me see if I've got my high strings now. Okay, here we go. Now, let me do this. Let me do this. I'm going to feed this into the aux effects that I've got loaded into Unify.
so this is the low string section and the high string section longs okay this is high strings marcato low strings long high strings marcato and then i have low strings in another instance so you've got three instances that we're, we've loaded up here and there's more yes so we've got uh low string shorts here Uni yeah, Unify brings it all together. Uh, it just brings it all together. Um, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. See, and one thing is, if you see these little, you see these little crossfades. So this is where the instruments will overlap. And so I just kind of have the have the note ranges crossfaded, so it just kind of smoothly goes into one or another. Um, you can split the keyboard. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can use, that's what I've got here. Um, you know, uh, let's see, yeah, you can do it. If you have multiple manuals, you can you can have it where you've got manual one transmitting on MIDI channel one, and then those instances are there. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's all up to your imagination. Uh, so one thing I did, uh, and then we're, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to say goodbye for now, for, for, but to be continued, this is like one of those cl cliffhangers here um, I went ahead and put together like a really interesting tr track just using the, um, the drums, the Colossus drums. That's what I kind of played a little bit before with the... Yeah, man, uh, Cakewalk has been with me for almost 30 years, believe it or not. And it just keeps getting better. And now it's free and they're fully supporting it. Now this is the granular glass kit. So many wild sounds here. So I laid down a groove uh, with with uh, one and then another track. I've got the guitars. And then I've got uh, some horns here, and we'll come back and do some more. The brass hairpins. Okay, so now I'm just gonna run this and um, see what happens. See what happens, and I'll... <laughs> Let's do that one more time. Now watch, we'll put the strings, we'll put the unified strings in here now. Here we go.
so that is uh, a little a little taste of Colossus. Um, thank you so much for joining me for this uh, colossal. My monitor got tired. <laughs> So I look forward to seeing you again, and I can't wait to see you all next time as we take another joyful journey. So we'll see you next time. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay joyful.